Hi, I'm George, and in this video I'll be comparing Photoshop Elements, which is right there, to Affinity Photo, which is right back here. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that bell notification icon to get notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Alright, let's get to it. I've had frequent questions over the years about how Photoshop Elements compares to Affinity Photo and the main reason for those is that they are kind of in a similar price range. Although Affinity Photo usually is around 50 bucks and Photoshop Elements is up pushing the $100 range. So Photoshop Elements is the more expensive program but it really isn't a fair comparison. They really have different audiences. Photoshop Elements is aimed more at your hobbyist, your consumer level, and it has a lot of things in here to help somebody along with projects, such as the quick guided edits up here. Let this thing load in. Here we go. Smart fix exposure and so forth. It also has these guided edits, lots of fancy tricks you can do in here, where it just kind of walks you through step by step. These are things that you don't have over in Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is more like the expert mode here, but it's even more like the larger and much more expensive Adobe Photoshop program. It really is a very full featured program and can do an awful lot of stuff. Let me show you just a few more of the differences in here and reasons why you may want to choose one or the other. We'll start here with Photoshop Elements. I already mentioned the quick and guided of course. Other things that you have in Photoshop Elements if you're doing a lot of creative stuff like I like to do. You have loads of effects over here on the right hand side. Right there all kinds of fun stuff. You have access to a lot of filters. Let's bring our filters up here. There we go. Tons and tons of filters in here, very creative different kinds of filters as we see in here. There are lots of very creative styles that you can work with in here as well. And loads of graphics that are included in the program. Lots of backgrounds, frames, graphics, shapes, even some text effects right down here. A lot of stuff included right in the program and I use these all the time in my projects. I tend to go a little bit more graphics oriented. Of course you'll find the same things up here under the filter menu, filter gallery up here. A lot of great effects in there. Some of the things where there are similarities between the two programs. If we go up here to layer, in here we have fill layers and adjustment layers. These are specialty layers that allow you to apply certain adjustments onto an image without damaging the actual image. It's contained on a separate layer so you can then show it or hide it or readjust it in the future if you want to. It makes it very easy to have complete control over your projects. So you have similar things to this over in Affinity Pro as well. We have a layers control over here. And in here we have our blend modes and layer masks, layer groups, just standard stuff. Some of the things that are missing here in Photoshop Elements that are very useful for more advanced work are things like separating out channels. We don't have any channels available here in Photoshop Elements. That's just one of those main things. There are also a lot of things that I've done video projects here on YouTube about for Photoshop Elements to show how to work around these limitations and a lot of my Photoshop Elements channel is based on that. How do you work around the limitations of Photoshop Elements? Let's now switch over and take a look at Affinity Photo and I'll show you some of the comparisons in there. Let's just get this a bit smaller. There we go. So here's Affinity Photo. I'll maximize this. Basic layout is the same. Of course it has the dark look as opposed to the light look. This is a more modern look actually for programs. Left hand side tools panel as you'd expect. Your menus across the top. Options are up here in elements there. Options are down there at the bottom. No big difference there. Right hand side we have our layers, adjustments, effects, styles, things that are similar over here on the right hand side. Some of the more advanced differences on styles very limited on the number of styles. This kind of creativity is better done over in Photoshop Elements. On the effects, there are more effects here. These are basically your, your layer styles that you have over in Photoshop Elements. In Elements we have the outer inner glow, we have outline over there. There's also some bevel and emboss stuff. We don't have color overlay, gradient overlay, 3D, or Gaussian Blur. None of those are as layer effects over in Photoshop Elements. So layer styles are far more advanced here inside of Affinity Photo than they are over in Photoshop Elements. Some of the projects I've done over in Elements show some of the limitations of Elements. Here's just one example. This is different than I did over there but it shows one stark difference in here. 
and that's doing this kind of masking for hair. This is very, very difficult to do, especially in here where it gets really, really busy. This actually was very easy to do here inside of Affinity Photo, and that's because Affinity Photo has a very good refine edge tool. So if you make a selection, let's just go over here to our layers. There we go. I'm going to hide that and hide the image. There's the background layer. As you would guess with any other program, you right click on this and you can then make a duplicate of that layer. There's our duplicate. I'll pull that above that one image. We'll come back to that in just a moment. So here's our duplicate. We can grab any standard masking tool. I'll just use the standard brush tool here with the add option. And just like painting in a selection over inside of Photoshop Elements, you just paint in your selection like this. With this one, you can either have it snap to your edges or not. Here's a snap tool. It's going to find the edge for you. So it's very easy to make your basic selection. That's all fine. We can either use this with snap or without. And we can add or subtract. I'll just subtract this little bit right there. And I'll come back here to add, and I'll add that little bit of hair right there. You can change brush sizes, all those things. Here's your brush size right there. So pretty straightforward. Let's just make sure we add some of this inner stuff in here and get this complete. Now when you get to the area like the hair, that has to be done with a refine edge tool. You need to have some artificial intelligence helping you out in areas like this. And there is a tool like that here. Right there it says refine. Brings up the refine edge tool. Looks very much like what we have over in Elements. Same way of working, simply paint in and then the program re-examines that section and then tries to do a better selection from that. Now I've found that the artificial intelligence here inside of Affinity Photo is actually better than the artificial intelligence in Photoshop Elements. It does a better job with the Refine Edge tool, basically. So you get a much better job this way than you would with that other program. And that's a, a big plus right there if this is the kind of thing that you do a lot. Something else that's nice in here that you can't do over in Photoshop Elements is that you can go back and forth between your Refine Edge tool and your regular tool. For instance, up here I have some masking happening in her hair that I don't want. I have some background up here that's not in the select area that I want to have this removed. And I can't do that with the Refine Edge. Over in Photoshop Elements, your option is to apply that and then you're back to your regular layer again. In here you can click Apply and you're right back to your Selection Tools. So I can now come over here to Add and I can add back in like that. I can go back to Subtract and I can take out the parts that I don't want. Kind of refine that edge manually and then back to the Refine Edge tool again and clean up my Refine Edge. So it gives you far more ability to go back and forth in here and get a much better job. So that's just one example. I'll just apply that. There's the mask. If I now show a background image in here, we need to apply our mask onto this one. So let's go ahead and do our mask. There's our selection. I'll do it this way, layer, and then come down to new mask layer. There's our mask layer right there, and we're now seeing that background. I'll just deselect that. So there's the mask, very easy to make as you see. Now the background image, this is something else that we don't have available to us over inside of Photoshop Elements. That comes from this image down here, it comes from another neat tool. I'll go up here where it says stock, and this gives you direct access to Pixabay, Unsplash, and also Pexels right here. Different services, you can do a search in here for the image that you want right inside of the program. I tend to like using Pixabay. And then just grab an image, anything you feel like. I'll take this one this time. I'm just going to drag it and drop it right over here. And click on Close on that. And just grab my Move tool. And we'll get this positioned. Looks pretty good like that. Okay, let's go back to our layers. And then we'll bring back in our image up here. Let me just pull this layer right down below that. And put one more down. There we go. And there it is. Now there's a bit of cleanup needs to be done up here along the edge of that mask. It's easy to do. There's our mask layer. Just click on the mask layer. You can then edit that directly. Just like in other programs, black hides, white shows. So I can just grab a paintbrush and have our color set at black. We can see that over here on our swatches, for instance. Here's the swatches. There's the recent color right there set at black. And I can just paint right onto that layer mask and actually clean that layer mask. That's actually a cloud back there. So again, easy to adjust your layer masks as well. So all the standard tools, but more advanced than what's available over there in Elements. And I think that's the main thing I'm taking away here from Affinity Photo, is that this is a more advanced program and gives you more control over photo type work. This actually is good enough for a professional photographer to use. I really wouldn't recommend Photoshop Elements to a professional photographer, but I would recommend 
affinity photo to a professional photographer. Let me show you just a couple of other examples in here. Here's something which I showed how this couldn't be done over inside of Photoshop Elements. This bending of an image like that. There's no tool to easily do that in Photoshop Elements. You can do it in Photoshop, no problem, but no tool for that in Elements. Let me show you how this is done here. I'll just place a new file here, come down to File Place, and here's my picture right there. I'll bring this one in, just put it right there, and I'll hide that one layer. So here it is, just sitting on top as a new layer. I'll just resize this. Standard stuff, you can do almost any program. All this is straightforward, nothing, nothing to this much. Now this much you can do up to this point very easily inside of Photoshop Elements as well. You can place things, you can resize things. The problem is that curve at the top and at the bottom. Now Affinity Photo has a tool over here called the Mesh Warp Tool. Click on that and just close that down. And then you can click on a corner and it brings up these control handles right there. I can actually just grab these now and I can bend that curve down until it fits the curve of the top of the cup. Come down to the bottom, same thing. Bend that curve down until it fits the bottom of the cup. Click on apply and there we go. Just a couple of seconds and there's that curve image. Again, something which you can't do over in Photoshop Elements. Let me show you one more example. For this I want to come back over here to Photoshop Elements and that is this project right here. This was a special kind of photo retouching which is called frequency separation. It's a technique where you separate out a kind of blurred color layer and then a real high contrast black and white layer and then you do your photo retouching on those two different layers depending upon which part of your image you want to do. The fuzzy layer here, that's easy, just using a Gaussian blur for that, but making this layer is a bit of tricky work inside of Photoshop Elements. It can be done, but it's a few odd steps to get to that point, so it's a tricky problem. Now over inside of Affinity Photo, since this really is a more photo-based program, let me just go over here. There we go. Nice close-in shot. Let's say I wanted to come in here and do a frequency separation trick on this. Just go up here to Filters, come down to Frequency Separation, choose apply and there's our frequency separation already done for us. There's the high frequency right there and below that is the low frequency kind of soft version. And You can adjust the amounts on those very easily as you're setting that up. So a one, two, three and you're done and ready to go with your photo editing. Something else people have asked me a lot about and I haven't even done a video on this yet because it really is a bit tricky inside of Photoshop Elements and that's doing focus stacking where you stack several images together at different focus settings and it's used mostly in macro photography. We're in real tight on real small objects to get a good clean focus over a long range. It's very hard to, to get a long depth of field for such a small object. And you can do it inside of Elements, kind of, if you use the Elements Plus plugin, but it requires that and some other steps. Here inside of Affinity Photo, go over here to File and right there, Focus Merge, it actually has a tool for doing that directly. So there's a lot more in here. Again, it, it's a much more professional level program than Photoshop Elements is. So my recommendations, if you are a photographer, if you're serious about the program, I would use or get Affinity Photo. One more thing I just want to show real fast here, File and New in here. Come down here, look at the color format right there. There's your RGB 8, that's what Photoshop Elements does. Affinity Photo also has RGB 16 and 32, Grayscale 8 and 16 Plus, CMYK, and Lab Color. Both of those are missing inside of Elements. You don't have the 16 or 32 bit as well. You can also open up and work directly with raw photos here inside of Affinity Photo. You can't do that over inside of Elements. So again, it's a much more advanced, more feature-rich program for doing photographic style work. If you do the more creative stuff like I like to do, then Elements is a great program. If you're really focused on photography, then Affinity Photo is a great program and it's cheaper than Elements. And that brings me to my best reason to get this program, and this is right now, not sometime in the future. And here's the Affinity Photo webpage. It's affinity.serif.com, easy to find that, or just do a search on Google for Affinity and you'll find this Affinity photo, you'll find this page, really easy to find. Now I'm not getting paid anything for doing this video, I'm not making any money from this, this is just my personal feeling about this. I bought Affinity Photo to show you how the program works here in this particular video. Now the reason why I think this is so great, first off is that normally this only costs 50 bucks. 
I mean, it's a cheap program compared to even Photoshop Elements. But even better than that, right now, limited time, 50% off. Let me just get rid of that cookie thing right there. There we go. 50% off. I don't know how long the sale is going to be going for, but at the moment, it's only $25 for this program. Fully feature-rich, fully professional editing program, photo editing program for only $25. Bucks. And you can also do a free trial as well. So, you know, based on this price, I would just say go ahead and buy this thing. I mean, what do you have to lose? But it's much more powerful, feature-rich than Photoshop Elements. And if you're serious about photography, but you don't want to spend the huge bucks that Adobe Photoshop costs, this is a great alternative, and I really highly recommend it. So there you go. That's my look then at the Affinity Photo Program. And again, I think it's a wonderful program for photographers. There's a lot in here that you can do. It's not as good for beginners or people who are just kind of hobbyists because it is a bit more serious. There are more tools. It means it takes more learning to use this program than it does with Photoshop Elements. And it doesn't have those cheats in there like the quick edits and the guided edits to help work you through some of those things. But if that's not a problem, if you are comfortable using a photo editing program, then you can't really do better than the Affinity Photo program especially at $25. So there you go. That's my comparing of the two. Again, they really don't compare. This really compares more to Adobe Photoshop. And with that price point, there's no comparison there either. If you don't need those extra things that Photoshop does, like 3D space and that kind of stuff and video editing, those kind of oddball things. But if you just want straight photo editing, this is a great program to use. At this point, I don't have any additional training for Affinity Photo. If I get a lot of requests for that, I might do a training title for Affinity Photo as well. This one certainly deserves it. I just don't know how big the audience is for this yet, and that's always my consideration. I'm putting in the time and effort it takes to make a full training title. Leave comments if you want to see something like that. If I get enough of those, I may go ahead and do one of those titles. It takes months to make one of those training titles, so it's not a little thing to do. But if there is enough interest, I may go ahead and do that as well. This program certainly deserves it. I just don't know if there's a big enough market for me to actually spend the time to do one of those. But there you go. Great program, and I highly recommend taking a look at this. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe as well. And to learn more about Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training course for that program. And there's a link for that right down there in the description.